Good morning. It's Saturday, July 30th. It's 9 a.m. in the east, 6 a.m. in the west. I'm Michael Steele filling in for my friend Ali Velshi. The walls are closing in on Donald Trump this week. We learned that the former president is a subject in what Attorney General Merrick Garland has said is, quote, the most wide ranging investigation in the history of the Department of Justice. Lawyers at DOJ have been asking about Trump's conduct during the period between Election Day 2020 and the insurrection in early January 2021. According to the Washington Post, quote, the prosecutors have asked hours of detailed questions about meetings Trump led uh, in December 2020 and January 2021, his pressure campaign on Pence to overturn the election, and what in uh, instructions Trump gave his lawyers and advisors about fake electors. This does not mean that the Justice Department has opened a criminal case against Donald Trump, but it's an indication that they're gathering information about his conduct. Meanwhile, the January 6th committee may have wrapped up its blockbuster public hearings for the summer, but its own investigation of the Capitol insurrection is far from over. The committee has continued to meet with witnesses in recent days, including with former Trump administration officials. On Thursday, Mick Mulvaney, who once served as Donald Trump's acting chief of staff, sat down for an interview with the committee. The Associated Press has also confirmed that former Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin was recently interviewed by the committee and the other former cabinet members are in negotiations to do the same. Yet there are some things that neither the Justice Department nor the January 6th committee may ever find out. The Washington Post reported this week that even more text messages sent and received by federal employees from around the time of the insurrection were deleted and may be gone forever. This latest news involves the phone records of former acting Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf and his acting Deputy Secretary Ken Cuccinelli. This situation closely resembles the recent revelation that the Secret Service app also deleted and failed to preserve text messages that may be relevant to the January 6th investigation, including from the phones of agents who were assigned to Donald Trump on the day of the insurrection. For more on this, I'm joined by now by Betsy Woodruff-Swan. She's a national correspondent for Politico, and she's also an MSNBC contributor. So, Betsy... Let's start with these deleted texts from the phones of Secret Service agents and Homeland Security officials. Last night, The Washington Post published an update to, uh, to the situation with the Secret Service. Uh, quote, the Department of Homeland Security's chief watchdog scrapped its investigative team's effort uh, to collect agency phones to try to recover deleted Secret Service texts this year, according to four people with knowledge of the decision and internal records reviewed by The Washington Post. So what do you make of this? And are the alarm bells ringing for you as well on this? It's just at the bare minimum, it's very embarrassing for the Department of Homeland Security because this is a department that was stood up in the wake of 9-11 and since then has worked to establish itself as the go-to piece of the federal government for cybersecurity and all cyber issues. The fact that so many really important DHS officials, and remember, Secret Service is a component of DHS, suddenly have a, a, a major cyber problem and that their messages weren't being retained and stored is just, it's, it just looks and is terrible for this agency. DHS and its component parts have long been plagued by management problems, morale problems, internal tension, uh, struggles just to handle the missions that they're supposed to be responsible for. This, this particular episode only heightens, I think, the level of external scrutiny that the department is going to be getting as it really grapples with literally with basic cyber issues. And in fact, my colleague Eric Geller reported yesterday that the Secret Service is considering disabling iMessage for Secret Service agents because they're worried about being able to retain written messages that these personnel are sending. Even, even the most benign possible explanation for why all of this has happened is just deeply embarrassing for the department. So, Betsy, you have a new story out this morning about Joshua Finley, uh, the RNC's current national director for election integrity, and, and how the Justice Department is interested in the role he played in the fake elector scheme. Uh, who is he, and how is he connected to the plot to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election? 
Finley's name is mentioned in at least three Justice Department grand jury subpoenas that it sent out as part of its investigation into the fake electors plan. At the time that the plan was being played out, Finley was on the legal team, the internal legal team of the Trump campaign. And prior to the the scheme rolling out the way that it did, he'd worked the summer before helping handle delegates for the 2020 Republican National Convention. In that capacity, he just developed a very large Rolodex as well as detailed knowledge of the way delegates work, of the way conventions work, and of the way ultimately that the electoral college process and people involved would play out. When he was on the Trump campaign's legal team, he was somebody who was viewed by people involved or connected to the alternate elector scheme as relevant, at least by one of those people, I can tell you, because I reviewed an email that one of the actual alternate electors sent directing a subordinate to be in touch with Joshua Finley and another person as part of their preparations for the alternate elector project unfolding. Of course, the fact that Finley's name has shown up along with many other names in these Justice Department subpoenas does not mean he's being accused of wrongdoing, does not mean he's being accused of a crime or anything to that effect. But it does mean the Justice Department is interested in communications that he had with witnesses. And after Biden was inaugurated, Finley went on to become the national director of the Republican National Committee's Election Integrity Project, which is what they call the project that's seeking to recruit countless uh, volunteers from around the country to engage in poll watching and to try to you know, catch Democrats in the act of committing voter fraud. It's a big project that the RNC is spending a lot of money on. Finley is the national director of that project. And at the very least, it's certainly notable that he's someone who has who's drawn interest from the Justice Department. Well, well Politico's Betsy Woodruff Swan, I thank you very much for that. Thank you. Here with me now is the Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He's a member of the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. And he's also a lieutenant colonel in the Air National Guard and the founder of the Country First Caucus. Adam, it is such a real pleasure seeing you, my friend. Um, welcome. Uh, we got this report this week uh, that Mick Mulvaney and Steve Mnuchin have both recently sat down for interviews with the January 6th committee and that other former Trump administration officials are negotiate in negotiations to do the same. Uh, so what's the line of inquiry that you're pursuing with these uh, former Trump officials and and what have you learned from them and, and, and or hope to learn from them? Yeah, I mean, a lot of that I can't go into, unfortunately, I wish. But look, we. <laughs> are continuing the investigation that's that's what i can say is you know we had our our set of hearings which i think was very important for laying in front of the american people a lot of a story that they i i realized later they've never heard you know there, a lot of times when you're in the middle of this investigation there's stuff that we knew that we kind of look around and say well maybe not everybody knew this and so what we're doing now is completing some of those i guess crossing some of those t's we're, we're looking in other areas of interest. Obviously, we have an interest in, you know, was the 25th Amendment close to being uh, invoked? It, in my hearing, frankly, last Thursday, uh, we put out a letter by uh, uh, Secretary Scalia, uh, Eugene Scalia, where he had mentioned talking about the president needing to meet with the cabinet, which I think was kind of a, kind of a way of threatening the 25th Amendment. So there's a lot more to go.